Let's talk about drawing the skull. The skull is really something that you should understand uh, as the basis of any face drawing because all the goo and muscles and skin and eyelids that are attached to it are always going to be dependent on this hard structure that supports it all. And uh, a great artist once said that uh, if you know the name of something and you have the internet, you have zero excuse to not use reference uh, footage in this day and age. So one of the first things you can do is go to Google Images, you can search Skull, there's lots of things. Even better than that is, I think, using Sketchfab, in which you can uh, just search for 3D models of things, and now you have a skull that you can pose to any direction that you need. Uh, there's also Blend Swap, which has various free skulls. Some of them might be really cartoony and crappy, and we want to go for the more realistic ones, although we do want to possibly pare it down. And if I can recommend some books, uh, Gary Fagan's The Artist's Guide to Facial Expressions is really good. And also our own beloved Andrew Loomis has some guides on how to simplify the skull into some basic shapes. So let's start drawing this and label it. Now when you're starting off, uh, remember that the first thing you want to think about is getting the whole form down. Good drawing is made from division, and bad drawing is made from addition and subtraction. So we don't want to go, you know, here's a single tooth, and here's another tooth, and here's another tooth. That's not what we want. We want this big idea of the whole skull as a giant object to begin with. Really just think of it as sort of a square-like, circle-like thing. You hear the term squarus sometimes regarding this. And I'm not even breaking this up into the separate chunks of the head and the mandible yet, because I just want this overall geometry in. So this goes back to project one still. Like, If you can think of a simple sphere a simple square. Being able to construct those as basic objects is going to take you very far. Now once I have this base idea down here, I can start thinking about uh, other aspects of it, like geometry within geometry. Don't think of this as individual every single crevice and getting this single line of contour right. Instead think of this large object and then you can start breaking it down into simple objects. So for instance over here if we have this uh, if we have this as a giant sphere you can then start thinking about how well, this is just sort of you can almost think of it like a uh, hot dog that's been squashed onto this. And you can follow these contours all the way up, right? So I want to see that curve of the head that way, that way, and then coming down for this brow. And the next thing we have is your nasal bone. We can start labeling these as we go. And the nasal bone, again, uh, is going to follow that line of symmetry. So we have this line of symmetry going around its head. And then coming down here. And that has kind of a plane right here. And then that plane goes down like that. So again, we don't care about this sort of small detail yet. We care about the large shape. If you think about this shape, that's not so complex. That's just like a, 
A trapezoid, right? Possibly with some rounded corners. That's not so hard to draw. And this, you know, you can imagine this as two separate chunks of bone that are almost like, you know, imagine they're separate chunks of Play-Doh and then you just kind of smush them together right over here. So now you're going to end up having your zygomatic process, which kind of goes, uh, you can almost think of them as like an x-ray specs shape and then it goes back. And then we're going to start just welding these shapes like this. And you can get smaller and smaller and just keep following these contours. So you can see how this is going like that. And then it starts shape welding onto this. So let's go back over here. two sort of Viennese sausages for our island. We're going to have that x-ray specs shape like that. This is starting to come together. Now for your jaw and your teeth, this is one where I think a lot of bad drawings happen because people don't understand uh, your palate and your teeth. You can think of this as just like a giant shape like that. And it curves around like that and then eventually starts going upward. But so if you don't understand that, you don't think of how your chin has to be wide enough here to contain your front teeth, right? And so this is where you end up seeing, like, I don't know, anime chins that are super, super knife sharp. Or perhaps mouths that don't necessarily wrap around their teeth. Yeah, anime. I'm trying to think of this as like a large plane that's still connected to that nose. And I don't care about individual teeth yet, because I can break those up later. And you can see all these little areas that I start continuing to shape weld here. Where I'm trying to say that this is connected to this. And eventually what's really great is this will allow me, we'll actually draw it later, this will allow me to like shade this a little bit. Because I'll be able to say, well, this is curving upward and this is going down. Again, keep an eye on reference all the time. It's one of the reasons we draw skulls in the classroom is that's just a form of reference. Now 
these right here are your mental tubercles, I think. And we can start labeling this now. So we'll create a new layer and let's double check what I need. So frontal, parietal, occipital, and temporal lobes. We can actually look up. Just you know, just Google it. Frontal parietal. And you're gonna get a wealth of resources to help you out. See, this is your frontal bone, here's your parietal lobe, this is your temporal lobe and occipital lobe. And it's always good this is one of those things where because they're always covered with a big plate of skin, uh I don't really necessarily remember where these seams are. So that's a great example of where I would go in and check my reference. So that would be kind of like there. We can sort of see that seam right here for the uh, temporal lobe. So if you have this picture and this picture, you should be able to wrap this around in 3D and figure out how this line goes, this line, and this. So it's going to be something like that, right? Frontal. Parietal. Can you turn the volume down? Roxanne? Temporal. And down here, occipital. We've also got our nasal bone, which we can label. Have our mandible. I think that's on there. And the angle of mandible is something I just think of as an important lang uh, landmark. It's this corner right here. And you know, if you're going to construct a head really, really fast. I think it's just important because like there's only a this is like a super simplified skull, right? And there's only a few lines here. Which are like, you know, you, these skull ones, your nasal bone, uh your zygomaticus, which we're gonna label next. Zygomatic. What do they call it? Chigomatico. It's a Spanish skull.
And so the reason I think the sort of angle of mandible is important is just because between that and your mental tubercles, That's kind of every chunk of the major planes of the skull. And this little head is really good. I just love doodling. So now, oftentimes my process is, you know, again, division is better than addition and subtraction. I can work very, very loose on the starting layer. And then once it's in place, I can just go in. I can turn the opacity down. Or in your guys' case, draw with a light color pencil to begin with. On this new layer, I can start actually doing like a very clean render. Of just the exact lines that I want. This is, I think, like a source of constant bad drawing, which is people see finished products like, you know, comic books or anime is a big one. You know, you see anime and you don't see any of the process behind it. You just see like this finished high gloss ink and so you assume that they just dove into that and in reality uh, they had like a really structured loose beginning and then they went in and inked it and so uh, to just draw like the facade of anime always makes this it's horrible Now what's interesting about skulls is there's actually only one real point of articulation other than getting punched so hard that the whole thing falls apart. And that is your mandible, which orbits here. So uh, if I were to do something like on this guy, rotate it at this point of rotation, that opening of the jaw is going to say a lot about where things are placed. So for instance, you have muscles that attach to this that are going to go like that, stuff like that. You're going to have fat bulge up here and skin. So it's very important to know the skull because all the muscles are going to always con uh, conform to it.
once you have something like this in place, you can start caring about value. And I am cheating because I'm digital, but uh, imagine you want to render this up. Actually, I'll try and render this entirely using just this pencil. So I could start by uh, let's see, we can see like how these planes affect things. So this is light here and dark here. And this is just right here. That's just a very tiny rectangle, right? So if you understand form, it's very easy to start rendering the whole thing out. Normally I would cheat and go into, uh, not cheat, but I would do this in a more paint-based way where I would fill the whole layer in and uh, use a huge brush before switching to these little brushes, but I don't want to complicate things too much. And this is something you should always be ready to return to, is the uh, simplest, simplest tool in the book. The old pencil. So I can sort of render this not quite all the way to that shadow line. And that's going to leave like a little bit of reflected light. Or I can start, up, start to hatch this in the other direction. And a lot of times what I'm trying to think about is terminators. So we can see terminators all over here. See that line? See this really subtle line of shadow going here? That's something we can think about. And a lot of times it's really handy to just draw the terminator in, in my opinion. Because... Afterwards, it's basically just a coloring book at that point. I'm just taking my semi-gray crayon and filling this in. Do a lot of squinting in art to double check your values. Again, value is just lightness or darkness. But even better than squinting is uh, the great painter William Bougaros that you should blink a bunch because it's the same effect as uh, trying to squint, but I think it strains your eyes less. So in the same way that we have Terminator, Core Shadow, Halftone, we're starting to get some ambient occlusion right there, a little bit right there, or it's going to be even darker. A 
a lot of times uh, a really good thing to do to start off a drawing is uh, just mark somewhere that you know is going to be your darkest dark at the value that you actually want it, such as these eye sockets. And if you make sure that's real dark, later on it's going to bug you less. Or rather, as you start to render, you'll be thinking about that. And note that when I'm uh, hatching this stuff, I'm always trying to think about like, how does this round around the skull? So can I imagine things that are going like that and following that contour? And trying to hatch in such a way that uh, it'll emphasize that. So similarly, how does that wrap around there? Go back to default. For these teeth, uh, I think like the important thing to focus on with teeth is not like their individual geometry, but just these points of ambient occlusion between the teeth is something that <clears throat> I go right for. And I honestly don't care how perfect you make these teeth, because as long as they're like kind of rotating in space. Because most important is getting these basic ideas of overall shape down. That matters way more than each individual tooth. 